Yes, you are right. We have indeed already tested the Renault Megane E-Tech Electric a couple of months back. And it is fair to say that somebody, well, he was rather enthusiastic about it. It's brilliant. A really handsome design. It's all good. I think this might be one of the most fun cars to drive in the sector. This is pretty much spot on. Just buy that. But now the UK right-hand drive versions have arrived, which is wonderful. However, they're not quite as generous with the spec as we thought they were going to be. So, are we still excited about the Renault Megane? Let's find out. Right, let's kick off with how the Renault Megane looks. Now, I know this is a bit subjective, but I think Renault have done really well. I think it's a really good looking car. It's chunky, it's got presence. It's actually a little bit smaller in real life than it looks in the pictures, which is no bad thing, particularly if you're driving around town, a slightly smaller SUV, I think has got to be a positive thing because there's still lots of space inside. Overall, I really like the styling. There's plenty of attention to detail. For example, you've got the lines down the side, which are reflected in the design of the lights. And actually they're echoed kind of throughout the car. You can spot them down on the wheels as well. Um, while we're down here, I like these air vents. They kind of make the front look a bit more aggressive. It gives this car real presence on the road. And I've got to say, I really like the two-tone paint job as well. There's kind of the gray and the black. It's eye-catching. The only thing I'm less excited about is the badge on the front. I'm not sure what it is. It just doesn't go. Maybe it's too big, it's too obvious, it's too flat. Let me know in the comments below. Is it just me or do you agree? Okay, so red and blue are your only two real colours because the others are black, white, and there are two different shades of grey. But you can option a black, white, or grey roof from the techno trim levels upwards. So at least you can play with the palette a bit. But more on the trims later. The launch edition is the only one that gets the gold accents that Renault call the F1 blade, which is a bit of a shame because there's nothing wrong with a touch of extra bling. Now there's no hybrid or internal combustion engine versions of the Megane. This has been specifically designed to be an electric car. And that means really efficient use of space. Right, let's have a little look around back here. Yeah, it does actually feel really spacious. Plenty of room above my head, plenty of room in front of my legs. It does feel a little bit dark, um, but other than that, you can see how they've really efficiently used the space in the car. The boot is a particular win. 440 litres worth of boot back there. That's 25% more than your average hatchback. And yes, there's a false floor so that you can lob your charging cables out of the way. No frunk though, which does seem a little bit odd in a car that's been designed from the outset to be electric. Now inside, you are treated to Renault's OpenR Link multimedia system, which has integrated Google. Hallelujah. This is so exciting for me <laughs> because genuinely, A, well, it means that your operating system is constantly being updated, so it's super useful. It also means you don't need to worry about Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, although it does come with that if you want to use it. Instead, you can just use the lovely Google Assistant and Google Maps that is already integrated into the car. In other cars, when you're using Apple CarPlay, I find it so frustrating because sometimes the syncing doesn't work, it's just not automatic, it's a faff, it's not always straightforward. So this to me is amazing. I am also going to try the Google Assistant. Now before we started filming, I gave it a test. I've asked it honestly about 50 different questions and every time it's worked, it's recognised my question. So now that we're doing it to camera, let's see if it works. Hey Google, can you switch on my heated seat please? It. Turning on the seat heater for the driver. Thanks, Google. And there's my Renault app that does all the usual things, from scheduling charging to setting the interior temperature before you set off, to checking your state of charge in real time. So this should be an easy car to live with. Now, if we were playing a game, we'd spot the difference comparing it to the European version that Wookie reviewed, one point for spotting the display screen. In his version, there was a much bigger 12 inch portrait display screen. In this version, we only get a nine inch and that is due to the limitations when it's being adapted into a right hand drive. But I still think overall, it aesthetically, it works really well. Now, when you do plug it in, the 60 kilowatt hour battery will give you 280 miles of WLTP range, which I think is a really decent amount of mileage. 
That is kind of expected now with an average electric car. I think if you look at what else is out there, like the Kia Nero EV and also the MG4 Long Range, it's about an equivalent. And the good news is that the charging systems are all pretty good too. 22 kilowatt AC means you can make the most of any convenient post. And 130 kilowatt DC means under half an hour for 10 to 80% charging on a big enough charger. More than that though, the Megane seems to be really quite efficient with the energy that you put into it, and that is only going to be a good thing. The Megane E-Tech, at least in basic form anyway, really is quite light for an electric car with this kind of range. It weighs in at 1,636 kilos, when other similarly sized cars are more like 1,800. Now that means that it can be more efficient. Remember, if you're lugging less weight around, then you don't need your brakes to be as big, your tires to be as wide, or motors to be as powerful to get the same results. Now, part of that is due to the fact that Renault have found ways to keep all the hardware as small as possible. We're talking everything from the battery, which is only 110 millimeters tall, to the motors. When you add in lightweight bits like aluminium doors, you can see where the weight savings start to tot up. The Megane actually feels really quite light from behind the wheel and that makes it really refreshing. It's a really enjoyable drive. It's pointy, it's direct, but it's not nervous. And you can really feel the nimbleness when you go around a corner or a roundabout. So I'm really enjoying the drive, I must say. However, it's not the fastest of cars. Zero to 62 miles per hour takes 7.5 seconds, but it's not slow with 220 brake horsepower. And the fact that it feels more fleet footed, I think means it's a really fun car to drive and play around with. One thing though, rear vision, where is it? It's not very good. The rear windscreen is unusually small. So there are quite large blind spots, I'd say. So it is probably worth specking those rear view cameras. So the versions. Now the range starts with the Equilibra at £35,995. And that comes with 18 inch alloys, LED lights all round, heated front seats and wheel, a good chunk of advanced driver assistance systems, there are a possible 26, and aircon, as well as the Google stuff that we talked about earlier. The Technograde starts at £38,495 and adds even funkier lights, 20-inch alloy wheels, rear-tinted windows, the option of two-tone paint, hands-free keycards, automatic wipers and a rear-view camera, as well as better audio and a host of other stuff. Then there's the Bells and Whistles Launch Edition, which is the one with all the gold bits. That's £39,995 and comes with, well, pretty much everything, plus a Harman Kardon audio upgrade, a surround 360-degree camera and all the toys. As ever, the middle child, the Technograde, seems to be the best combo of kit for the money. But since we drove that Megane in left-hand drive last year, the MG4 has arrived. And, well, that's a hatchback electric car with 280 miles of range and decent handling. And it comes in at £28,495 for the SE Long Range and £31,495 for the Top End Trophy. Now, that means the top spec MG4 is £4,500 less than the basic spec Megan e and 8500 less than the Launch Edition. Whew, think about that one. Right, well, after that drive, I think it is time for a verdict. We have now officially driven the Renault Megane E-Tech Electric, the right-hand drive version. And you know what? I still think it is a really decent car. It's stylish, it's fun, it's efficient, and it's gonna be available at the end of the year. So Renault actually have some cars to sell, which obviously, as you probably know, if you're trying to buy an electric car, availability isn't huge at the moment. Supply is really dwindling. However, let's not forget it's very competitively priced competitor, the MG4, because this is gonna cost you an extra four and a half thousand pounds for a relatively low spec model compared to a relatively high spec MG4. So make sure you do your research, punch in some numbers and work out which extras is worth having. Now, the only thing that is left to conclude is that I think we need a twin test between the MG4 and the Renault Megane coming soon. The electric car market is definitely hotting up with new models from loads of manufacturers. It's getting difficult to work out which one might be best for you. But do you know who can help? 
Yes, electromind.com. So please do visit the website if you need to know details. After all, we're here to clear the air.